If you're thinking about moving to Salt Lake City, maybe it's because you got a job offer. Maybe it's just because you think it's dope here. Maybe you can work remotely now and you're like, okay, I can go anywhere. Salt Lake City should be high up on the list in my opinion. Today we're talking, what's the cost of living like here? And uh, it's pretty good. Let's get into it. How's it going, y'all? My name is Jesse Lynch, and I run the hardest working real estate team in the game. We are called Welcome to Salt Lake City. You can check out our website, welcome to Salt Lake City.co, as in as in company. This YouTube channel is all about helping you find a place to call home, a place to land here in beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. And that's whether you're just buying a house for the first time or moving here from a different city, state, country, planet dimension. Oh, I've never said that before. That's fun. First time home buyers, relocations. That's what we do. And that's what we do better than anybody else. So if either of those things appeal to you, do us both a favor, subscribe to the channel, click that little bell to get notified, give this video a thumbs up, say what's up in the comments. For real though, this video, just a side note, this video, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of research. I would really very much appreciate thumbs up, leave a comment, say thanks for the time, period. <laughs> Send it out. I'd appreciate that very much. And as always, if you're thinking about moving here to beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah, just get a hold of us however you can. We have two of the slickest ways to get a hold of us. Basically, go to our website, welcome to saltlakecity.co. We have a contact form there. So easy to fill out. Just name, number, email address, whatever, a little bit of information, send it over. We will get back to you. Or maybe you have a little more information you want to share. Shoot us an email at info at welcome to saltlakecity.co. If I'm being honest, they both uh, lead to exactly the same place, which is me and I look forward to hearing from you. So don't be shy. And uh, if it feels a little too early for you to uh, reach out, maybe you're like a couple years out, that's cool. Yeah, I get it. Uh, of course, I'll, I get it. As always, subscribe to the channel and you go ahead and follow us on Instagram if you want or follow, that's what you say? Yeah, okay, shoot. <clears throat> um. What did I say? I get it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I get it, but as always, subscribe to the channel. But, uh, okay. First of all, subscribe to the channel so you can continue to get these amazing videos that we spend so much time and effort on. We appreciate that very, very much. <laughs> um, but then also, go follow us on Instagram at Welcome to Salt Lake City. And uh, yeah, just hang out with us there. That's kind of a sliver. If this is a uh, whole piece of pie, if this channel is a whole smorgasbord of information, that is maybe a, uh, a dessert, perhaps an appetizer, if you will. But all right, let's just get into it. These videos, this video might be a long one. Uh, there's a lot of information. It's a bit chewy. Um, so I uh, hopefully it's helpful. If you want to take notes, you can, but I don't know. I don't know why, unless you're writing a thesis, at which point I really hope this video is not in your bibliography. I hope you're using other sources, um, perhaps the same sources that I use to get this video. I'm not sure how well that would go over. So, okay, first things first, I guess, big picture cost of living. A couple things to consider. Niche.com, uh, which is you know a resource that I use very often, gives uh, Salt Lake City's cost of living a C. That's not that good, okay. I, I get it, that's that's not excellent. And according to bestplaces.net, it is 18% uh, higher than the national average. So that's not exactly great news, that's fair. Uh, I can appreciate that. But two statistics that I think actually do a better job of sort of showing the economic situation of Utah. Okay, I think these are quite revealing and it's accurate to how I feel about Utah and Salt Lake City. Utah ranks 12th highest income per household uh, in the entire country. So out of 50 states, actually 51, I think they count Puerto Rico, yeah, 51, something like that. So out of 50, whatever, let's say out of 50 states, uh, <laughs> they, they uh, rank Utah specifically, not Salt Lake City, it's about states. So some of this information is gonna be state-based. What do you do? Utah is ranked 12th highest 
income per household out of the whole country. And that number comes in around $75,000 per household as a median household income. By the way, this is all 2019 information because it's all from census and the census data takes a little while to get here. So $75,000, my assumption is by 2021 that has gone up given inflation and all these changes that have been caused by COVID. Nonetheless, that's the newest information that I have on this. So 75-ish thousand dollars per household uh, is the median income within Utah. And then, which is 12th highest in the country. So then you take that and you apply it to this other index, which I find quite fascinating. I, it was just, I went down the rabbit hole, by the way. It's also called the Gini coefficient. Gini, not like Gini in a lamp, like G-I-N-I, -I, uh, Gini. Okay, the Gini coefficient, he's the person who created it, by the way. Gini coefficient or <laughs> Gini uh, index is basically uh, an index that sort of calculates uh, income inequality, right? So when I think of median income, for, for one, I go like, well, yeah, but then you, you got to sort of take into account that like there's potentially the haves and the have-nots, right? And then the Gini uh, index sort of, to me, does a decent job of figuring out you know, what level of inequality there are between the, you know, poor and the, you know, ultra rich or whatever. But then it's obviously it's considering everything and just looking at general income inequality. Utah, fun fact, I think a lot of people didn't realize this. Utah is ranked the absolute lowest Gini index or Gini coefficient in the country. This number is not going to mean anything to you unless you just happen to be super into this, at which point I would think that you already know this. Now, the Gini index is 0.427. And again, that number probably doesn't mean anything to you, but just know that, you know, there is an index that has been created to, to calculate income inequality and Utah's is ranked the best in the country. Okay. So when you take into account that Utah is only one of, I think, 12 states with uh, a median household income over 70,000 and the lowest Gini uh, index in the country and an overall cost of living that is 18-ish, uh, 19-ish percent higher than the national average, I think it actually paints a pretty good picture. And I think when you go to Utah, when you go to Salt Lake City, that uh, that comes through. And I think when you go to Utah or Salt Lake City, I think, I think that's evident uh, that there isn't this enormous divide. Does that make sense? Which as far as I'm concerned is probably the single most important uh, aspect of is it nice to live there? You, you know, is there only one spot in the city that's you know rich, and then everything else is like destitute? No, that's not the case here, uh, and obviously that's an extreme. And there's a lot of places where you're like, oh, well, that's probably not where it's like there or here. Um, that's fine, but I guess ultimately, statistically speaking, those numbers fare quite well in the overall livability regarding the cost of living. So from there. Sorry, that was the longest caveat of all time. I don't even think it was a caveat. I think that was like, hey, hey, here's some good news. But all right, let's let's uh, let's dive into the, uh, I don't know if it's good news, I don't know if it's bad news, just the statistics. So first of all, this is true of many, many places, um, but not everywhere, um, but a lot of the most sort of expensive as far as like cost of living, just statistics. One of the biggest factors is almost always going to be housing, specifically, like home prices. That's true here as well. And all over the country, home prices are on the rise. I don't think that's any secret. And Salt Lake City is no different. The median sales price in Salt Lake City rose by 23% in the last year, which is pretty staggering, but that is pretty much true for, I guess, anywhere desirable. Okay, no shade on places that have had uh, a <laughs> seen a drop, um, but that, there's very, very few of those places. Anyways, um, but I guess any of the, like, the major metropolitan areas, for the most part, have seen a rise in home prices. It's a supply and demand issue, among many, 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 many other factors. 23% increase in the last year. I don't anticipate 23% annual. So, well, I mean, I could be wrong, you never know, but I do think that 2020 and 2021 have been a you know, very special in a certain way <laughs> kind of year. Uh, so yeah, 23% increase to a median sale price for all homes of $475,000. So, okay, I'm curious, you're watching, some percentage of you are like, 
475, holy buckaroons. And then some of you are like, 475? I can't even buy a burial plot for 475. Okay, so it depends on where you're coming from as to whether or not that housing price is good or bad or seems like a good deal or whatever. Interestingly enough though, uh, according to the, I think, National Association of Realtors, NAR, which is like the, 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 big, the big cheese of the whole realtor world. According to NAR, Utah, not Salt Lake, Utah is ranked 25th highest uh, home prices or highest median home prices for existing single family homes, okay? So that doesn't count uh, like condos, that doesn't count new build homes, just for existing single family homes. That number is up by 27% compared to a year ago, but it is ranked 25th nationally, 25th for Utah. So it's literally exactly in the middle of the pack, 50 states, 25th, right in the middle. So again, take all those other things. It's one of 12 states where median income is $70,000 and median existing single family home price is right in the middle. So 25th. And then the uh, inequality coefficient is the lowest in the country. Those all add up to be good. Even if you're coming from somewhere where home prices are considerably cheaper, I do still think quality of life here. And obviously it's gonna depend on where you live within Salt Lake City, within Utah, for what all those numbers shake out to be. Um, but it is, I think, uh, relatively affordable for single family homes compared to so many other areas. And then you kind of factor in the income stuff. And even if it seems high, I think lifestyle is still, you know, works out to your advantage if you do end up deciding to move here. And let's say, let's move on to rents because some of you watching this are, have no intention on buying, which is fine. We, fair warning, as real estate agents, we have very little place. We, we really have no place in the process of helping a tenant rent. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about uh, moving here, yeah, a lot of people from the coast are thinking like, oh, I'll just get a hold of my real estate agent or a oh, real estate agent and they'll help me find a rental. That's not really how it works here. You pretty much just work directly with a property management, pro property manager or uh, a landlord or whatever, and you sort of deal with them directly. There's very little area for a realtor to represent a tenant for whatever reason. That's just how it works. I know that coastal cities are used to working with a real estate agent. That's not how it works here. But I will still cover certain rental factors because maybe, you know, maybe you are coming out here, you're gonna rent for a year, but then you do eventually wanna buy or you're wondering if buying in the near to distant future is in the cards, but you still intend on renting. Okay, it's all valid information, you feel me? Okay, so for a studio apartment, I'm just gonna read this off my phone if I'm being totally honest. Okay, there's a website called rentdata.org. That's where I got this information. Um, and they do a thing called fair market rent. And it says fair market rent is considered very high in Salt Lake City compared to the national average. The Salt Lake City fair market rent area is more expensive than 94% of fair market rent areas. Okay, so it's saying it's higher than national average. But as far as metropolitan areas go, those areas, they're covering a ton of areas that are way, way, way smaller. So as far as like major cities goes, I'm gonna tell you that these numbers are not that bad. So <laughs> if you're coming from a small like rural town or a you know, much smaller metropolitan area, then these might seem high, but they're not bad. And to say they're in the 94th percentile, eh, that's like saying crime is really high compared to the national average but that's taking into account like every city, every small city ever, which you know has you know, way, way, way less people. But when compared to top metropolitan areas, crime in Salt Lake City is extremely low, like 170th out of 182. And while this is 94th percentile, I'm willing to bet that when compared to major metropolitan areas, it's gonna be quite a bit lower. So studio apartment median rent, $790. Huh? I'm very curious if you're like, what the heck? Or if you're like, geez, that's a lot of money. <laughs> okay, uh, one bedroom, $964. Two bedroom, $1,176. Three bedroom, $1,649. So quite a jump there from two bedroom to three bedroom. Maybe something to consider. Four bedroom, $1,870. Okay, so I would say 
not that bad. Uh, certainly compared to other metropolitan areas, yeah, pretty good. I assume like the four bedroom numbers, people are <laughs> from like New York or San Francisco or LA are like, is that per bedroom? I'm just kidding. That seems a little high, even for those areas. But more good news. According to move.org, Utah, Salt Lake City, has the second lowest utility costs in the country, coming in at just a shade over $300 per month. And let me read this again. Sorry for reading. It's just, it's a lot of information. I can't memorize this stuff. Are you kidding me? So the average monthly utility cost in the United States is a total of $370, okay, per month, average in the United States. Electricity coming in at 114, natural gas 63, water 70, streaming service 47, which I gotta say I find a little bit odd. Uh, broadband internet $60, trash and recycling $14 for a total cost of 370. And the biggest pieces that seem to be affecting that number is electric and natural gas, which makes sense. Cause when I, when I think about streaming services, I'm like, yeah, well, does Netflix cost more in New York versus Utah? Maybe, I guess, I don't know, but that would be, <laughs> I would be surprised about that. Um, I guess, I don't know, maybe there's a middleman. It sounds very uh, New York. I would say more relatively good news. As far as property taxes go, Utah is ranked 32nd out of 50th in order of uh, most tax collected to least tax collected. So again, less than sort of the median tax collected within the country. All of this feels very good to me. I don't know about you, it's feeling pretty promising. I used a tool called tax-rates.org, <laughs> terrible, uh, to basically to calculate uh, an, an estimated tax based on the median purchase price of 450, which is like right around what it is, and the median tax collected or the, I guess, expected tax collected for that amount would be just a shade over $3,000 per year, which again, Pretty good. Obviously like Texas and Florida, y'all might be like, that's so much money because you don't pay any and that's fair, but all your other taxes are higher. So I don't know, plus your utility bills are ridiculous. Last I checked, one place that I would say Utah is, is actually more expensive is in gas prices. Not absurdly, again, not the likes of California, um, but they are higher here than a lot of other places. As of recording this, it's like the day before Thanksgiving, so maybe that is even uh, a skew a little bit for that. Um, but as of recording this, gas prices uh, nationally are just under $3.40 per gallon, and gas prices here are just under $3.70 per gallon. So 30-ish cents more per gallon, here in Utah versus the national average. But again, I would say just out of curiosity for yourself, go to gasprices.aaa.com, as in AAA, as in like the insurance and like towing company or whatever, <laughs> roadside assistance. Go to gasprices.aaa.com and check it out uh, for what Utah is now versus where you are now being whenever you're watching this. There's a good chance you're watching this in a year from now, at which point this information is that gas prices specifically are going to be like no good at all. But uh, yeah, go there, check it out, see how it compares to what you're seeing at the pump where you are living. And uh, yeah, that's all the advice I got for that. One thing that I think surprises a lot of people is sort of the quality of Salt Lake City and Utah's public transportation system. UTA or Utah Transit Authority or whatever, the bus or the train, if you will, uh, though it, it is pretty... Good. It's pretty solid here, especially considering sort of the population, the size of the metropolitan area. And I would say the prices are quite good as well compared to a bunch of other places I've been. And again, keep in mind when this is recorded, if you're watching this two years in the future, you might want to check these numbers out for yourself just to see how they stack up. So I would implore you to go to rideuta.com uh, and then go to like the fares and passes section and just look up what it's going to cost for public transportation because right now, pretty good. If you want to ride the bus or the train one way it's two dollars and fifty cents i forget exactly how long the past lasts i think it's like 90 minutes it might be two hours or if you want as an adult if you want a whole day pass maybe you just plan on just bus hopping all over the place you can buy a day pass for five dollars per day maybe you ride the bus all the time a monthly pass for the bus and the train is $85, which that's pretty good. Uh, I, I've been all over the country. I've taken public transportation in a lot of them. That is good for sure. That monthly for $85, that strikes me as being like pretty dang, pretty 
pretty dang good. That said, you can get a premium monthly pass, which covers the bus, the train, which is also called the tracks, by the way. Um, it also covers the front runner, which is a higher speed train. It, it's There's way less options, but if you're making a bigger commute, the front runner could be just like your best friend. It also covers express buses, but the so there's the premium monthly pass, it's $170 per month. And then all of those numbers, if you are a senior, a youth, which I think is a funny word, by the way, there's also a reduced fare. I would say it was income guidelines. So there's a reduced fare and then also a student. Take all those numbers, cut them in half. That's pretty good. Uh, especially like, I'm thinking like a student, do a monthly pass, 85, cut that in half, it's $42.50. That's pretty good. Pretty dang good. As far as car insurance goes or auto insurance, uh, the rates here are pretty decent. Uh, I'm not going to cover all of it. Obviously, it depends on your age. As you get younger, teens cost a lot more. Uh, older folks cost more. Um, and then in the sweet spot, I would say the majority of who we help are sort of in their 30s and 40s, right? People who are helping buy a house here are in their 30s and 40s. This is also on the zebra.com, not sponsored. How funny would that be if it was? Uh, <laughs> but the median cost for 30s and 40s is almost identical and it's $1,500 per year, which uh, is just like just a little bit over $100 per month. That seems pretty good to me. I'm not gonna get into this because it. I think it just is too much. I don't. I actually don't think it'll like resonate. But if you're curious about, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. If you're curious about the cost of like home insurance and like property insurance, go to thezebra.com. They have a layout uh, depending on like cost of home and amount of coverage and that kind of stuff. But if I just say the numbers, it'll be ridiculous, pretty sure. And then as far as healthcare goes, uh, Utah is a state that is under the Affordable Care Act is required to carry insurance. I know there are some states, I actually don't even know what they are, sort of uh, exempt from the Affordable Care Act for whatever reason, um, but Utah is not one of those states. You are technically required to carry health insurance here. I'm sure like everywhere else, under the sort of federal mandate of the Federal Care Act, I believe everywhere else that falls under the Affordable Care Act, there are probably exemptions, uh, you know, given financial situations or whatever, where you wouldn't have to pay a penalty or you wouldn't have to carry insurance. So I don't know. I think these numbers are, again, it's just kind of, here's the average. I don't know that it's going to be that helpful, but I'll say it anyways. These are average healthcare costs from eHealth, which is like a big uh, system for the Affordable Care Act. There's the three tiers, bronze, silver, gold of coverage. And the median uh, costs, or sorry, the average monthly premium for the bronze is 380, the silver is 633, and the gold is 793. And the lowest monthly premium for those, bronze is 143, silver is 212, gold is 303. I don't know. This all depends very, very much on your current uh, situation. It's probably family members, et cetera, but then also your health and uh, probably a whole heap of other factors that are probably like a little bit, you know. On to the next thing. According to the EPI, which is the Economic Policy Institute, healthcare in Utah is ranked 31st out of 50 for most expensive. Number one being the most expensive, number 50 being the least expensive. So, but Salt Lake City is still going to be more than the national average when comparing to smaller markets. For infant care, uh, one infant per month. I don't know why that seems weird to say. The average cost of infant care for a year is like just under $10,000 and monthly is $829 per month. The cost of four-year-old child care, so toddler care, I suppose, is just over $7,500 and $636 per month. For the record, I've looked at this all over the country and these numbers are rarely good. <laughs> and so, you know, that, that number, we're still 31st out of 50. So that means there's 30 states with infant care and child care that's more expensive than Utah. And then you take into account uh, that Utah is in the sort of like top 12 highest paid median household incomes. Uh, that generally is pretty good, although just healthcare, I would argue, is probably just too expensive blanket statement. Eh, seem fair? More good news. Okay, as far as groceries are concerned, on a national average, uh, average monthly grocery costs are $355. I know that's arbitrary, so but we're just taking an average, and this is statistics that have been 
provided. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say that this is what it's going to cost you, but just if we're looking at a average to you know total picture of the country, average grocery costs three hundred and fifty five dollars. Uh, in Utah, Utah average grocery cost is $282 per month, which is like $75 less than that national average, which puts it at 48th out of 51st for like most expensive, number one being most expensive. So like the third least expensive groceries on average in the country, Utah. And then if we look at like entertainment costs, just like general entertainment costs, I don't, like, this isn't going to be that important, but it is sort of a, I don't know, a look into what things cost here. The sort of average cost for a dinner for two at like a mid-range restaurant in Utah is $60. And that's a three-course meal. I don't assume that that includes drinks or whatever, um, but 60 bucks for three-course meal for two people at a median, you know, like middle of the road restaurant. I don't know, that seems pretty decent. The average cost of a fitness club is $35 here. The average cost of a movie ticket is $12. That's all pretty good, but look, if you're thinking about moving here, just do whatever you can to get a hold of us. Go to our website, welcome to saltlakecity.co, fill out the contact form there, or shoot us an email at info at welcome to saltlakecity.co. And uh, yeah, you know, we'll answer more questions. Obviously these are just based on national averages and just like general public information. That said, before you stop, please give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. This video is taking me an hour already uh, <laughs> just to shoot it. And the research takes even longer than that. I would appreciate it very, very much. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below. Type Genie Index, G-I-N-I -I Index, thumbs up, send it. I'd appreciate that very, very much. And uh, as always, as you exit the video, please do so safely. Subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell to get notified so you can get more videos that are amazing, just like this one that take a lot of time. So give it a thumbs up. I'm just kidding. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye.